In this episode, six young friends take a swim together for the final time. A tiger shark ferociously attacks two of them. One of them is dragged under, never to be seen again. The other must fight for his survival. Can his friend save him or will he meet the same end? Hit that like button and subscribe right now. This is the terrifying shark attack on Norman Gervin and Jack Brinkley. Welcome to Final Affliction. Wednesday, October 27th, 1937. Storm clouds were gathering above the sea in Gold Coast, Australia. The water was warm and choppy. The light was gloomy with the sun barely breaking through the clouds. After work, a group of six friends headed to the pristine golden sands of Kira Beach. They entered the water just after 5 p.m. that evening. There were some good breakers about 90 yards out between the shore and a sand spit. Whilst the rest of the group headed in after a quick swim and splash about, Norman Gervin, Gordon Doniger, and Jack Brinkley remained in the surf. They had their bodyboards with them and they were waiting for the perfect wave to ride back in. It never came. Instead, Norman felt a sudden tug on his leg. He cried out in horror as he realized a shark was attacking him, waving his arms above his head, desperately trying to capture the attention of his friends, the shark tore through his skin. Gordon thought Norman was messing around and told him to ride the next wave in. As the next wave began to peak, Gordon noticed a sea of red surrounding his screaming friend. He dashed over to him. Gordon grabbed Norman's arm, but realizing it was barely hanging on, he repositioned himself behind Norman trying to support him in the water whilst kicking out at the shark. He shouted to their friend Jack who was swimming 10 yards away and Jack rushed over. As Gordon tried desperately to pull Norman towards the shore, Jack stopped dead in the water. He began kicking and thrashing around. In a frenzy, the shark had turned on him. Jack punched and slapped the water shouting out in fear. Panic gripped Gordon as he clung onto his friend, watching in horror as Jack was now attacked. Moments later, the shark was back for Norman. Gordon felt a sharp tug as it grabbed Norman's leg once more and began to shake him vigorously. Gordon held on as tightly as he could. His hand was slashed by the shark and in that instant, he momentarily loosened his grip. Norman somberly looked Gordon in his eye and spoke his last haunting words. I'm gone, he said, goodbye. And with that, Norman slipped through Gordon's fingers and was gone. Still 70 yards from the shore, Gordon and Jack made a mad swim for it. Frantically, they raced through the water, heads down. With every muscle fiber pumping their arms and legs as fast as they could go, adrenaline was coursing through their bodies. In a moment of terror, Gordon glanced to his side and saw the shark coming right at him. Miraculously, he managed to reach out and push it away. He pushed off from it as it slipped beneath him, and he felt a surge as a wave from behind him torpedoed him to shore. But the shark wasn't finished. Missing Gordon, it glided through the surf and made a beeline for Jack. As it launched itself at Jack, he cried out, and from the beach, Gordon's brother Joe leapt into the water. He ducked and dived under the waves, each time bobbing back up to see his friends splashing, coughing, and sputtering. The rough water slapped him in the face mercilessly as he tried again and again to reach Jack. He could see the shark's fin as it circled its prey. After what seemed like an eternity, Joe finally grabbed hold of Jack. If I hadn't tried to save him, it wouldn't have got me, said Jack. Supporting him around his chest, Joe swam powerfully back towards the shore. He momentarily looked back and saw the shark emerge from the water, its razor sharp serrated teeth only inches from his face. The rest of its body submerged as an eerie shadow just below the surface. Joe estimated it to be about eight feet long. It clamped down on Jack's left arm, twisting and pulling. Joe refused to let go. Jack groaned in agony. Blood poured from his gaping wound as the shark finally let go. He passed out from the trauma and Joe felt the heavy dead weight of his friend. His legs burned and his lungs felt as if though they were on fire as he heroically hauled his friend through the choppy surf. The beach was tantalizingly close. He could see the crowd of people now gathered on the sand, urging him to hurry as he inched ever closer to the shore. He glanced back over his shoulder. The splashing waves made it difficult to spot an approaching shark. 
Every second that passed, Joe anticipated the return of the shark from the murky depths. Eventually, Joe made it back to the safety of the shore. He dragged his friend onto dry land, gasping for air. The rest of the group gathered around and rapidly made a tourniquet around Jack's severed arm. The emergency services arrived shortly after and rushed Jack off to the hospital. He remained conscious throughout the entire ordeal. Miraculously, Joe had initially saved Jack's life, but tragedy struck once more. Surgeons were unable to save his arm, and he died in the hospital the next day. It was a devastating loss of two young men. Once Joe and Jack had made it to shore, one of the group, Alf Kilburn, jumped onto a jet ski to search for Norman. He skimmed over the ocean surface and then, just beyond the breakers, he stopped in his tracks. He saw a large pool of blood-stained water and there, circling it, was a huge tiger shark. Alf returned to the beach. Tiger sharks can grow to a massive 20 feet long. There have even been sightings of 25-foot tiger sharks. They are distinctive by their dark, tiger-like stripes on their skin. They frequent coastal waters and coral reefs. For this reason, they are more likely to come in contact with people. Although tiger shark attacks on humans are rare, they are the second most common after great white sharks. The next day, some of Norman's remains washed ashore. Lifesavers and local experts headed out in a motorboat and managed to catch a large female tiger shark. She measured 11 and a half foot long, had a girth of six feet and weighed 850 pounds. When the shark was cut open, there were distinct human remains inside, including Norman's hand, which was distinguishable by a unique scar he had. There are over 20 shark attacks in Australian waters every year. Of these attacks, two to three are fatal. Today, some of Australia's coastlines are protected by shark nets and drum lines. It is easy to fear these apex predators and turn to drastic measures such as culling them in hope of protecting people. But sharks are essential to the marine environment. As apex predators, they maintain the balance within the food chain. When shark populations are threatened, coral reefs, seagrass beds, and commercial fisheries all decline. Each of these habitats is vital to a whole host of other species, not least the survival of human beings. Tiger sharks are formidable predators. Like most sharks, they have specialized adaptations to enable them to hunt proficiently. They can detect electrical signals produced by their prey and can see in murky water and low light. There is very little that tiger sharks won't eat, but their main prey consists of fish and mollusks to sea turtles, dolphins, and sea lions. But as we've seen in today's story, they sometimes eat humans. And if you ever find yourself unknowingly swimming with them, you could very easily meet your unexpected final affliction.